it's Nicole, the math lady. Today we're talking about reducing fractions by dividing by common factors. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say we had a fraction like six twelfths. Well, we know that this fraction can be simplified. Well, how do we simplify it? Well, we look for a common factor that both of these numbers have. Well, let's just start with two, right? Two goes into six and two goes into 12. Let's see where it takes us. So we're gonna divide the top by two and divide the bottom by two. And go across. Six divided by two is three. 12 divided by two is six. Now let's take a look. We tried to simplify it, but are we done? Can't three, six go a little further? It can. So let's try to find another common factor for both three and six. Well, I'm gonna do it over here. Three, six, a number that goes into both of these is three. So let's divide the top and bottom by three. Three divided by three equals one. Six divided by three equals two. Can we go any further? Nope, we can't. One half is our answer. So the question is, is why did we have to do it twice? Ah, well let's take a look back at our 612. We chose two as our common factor, which is perfectly fine. It just means we had to do it again when we got an answer of three over six. What if we chose a different number as a common factor? What if we chose a number, a bigger number? What number goes into both six and 12? Ah, six. So I'm gonna write it over here. If we did it by six, divide the top by six, divide the bottom by six, so we picked really the greatest common factor that they have together. Six divided by six equals one. 12 divided by six equals two. And look at that, it gives us the same answer, but we did it in one step instead of two. So the rule is when trying to reduce fractions, pick the greatest common factor that you can, and that'll just give it to you a little bit less work when trying to reduce it. It's definitely not wrong to do it this way. You just wanna keep doing it until you get down to the, a number that can't be reduced anymore. But here, I'm all about the shortcuts, right? Aren't you? So pick the greatest common factor and you'll have less work. It also works when you have a whole number multiplied by a fraction. So we know to do this, we multiply our numerators across and our denominators across. So four times five equals 20. And then 12 times, we pretend there's a one there underneath the four. 12 times one is 12, but we're not gonna keep 20 over 12, are we? We can reduce right there. So think of the greatest common factor that they both have in common. I think that'd be the number four. So let's try it. Four goes into 20, how many times? Five times. And four goes into 12, how many times? Three times. Now, it's an improper fraction, but it makes it a little bit easier to figure out what that mixed fraction is going to be. We know three goes into five one time, and two is left over. So our mixed fraction is one and two thirds. You can also reduce ratios, right? Because when we put ratios together, we're really putting together a fraction. So let's say that we had uh, a bag, a sports bag that had baseball bats and baseball gloves in it. This one has four baseball bats in the bag, and we also have eight baseball gloves in the bag. So if I asked you what was the ratio of bats to gloves, we know we put the bats on top, four, and on the bottom for the gloves we put eight, but look at that, we can reduce this by dividing by a common factor. What's that common factor? The number four. So let's divide the top by four. We get one and divide the bottom by four. Eight divided by four is two. So there you go. The ratio of bats to gloves is one half or one to two. It's really that simple. 
Go ahead and uh, reduce fractions by dividing by common factors. We always want to make sure we get down to the lowest possible form of that fraction. All right, great job. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.